Hi there, I'm Chris for Tippy Club Gaming and today I've started on a project for a Rumble Slam ring that I want to make custom all myself. Uh, it's using the idea of the uh, the Back Alley Brawl expansion and I, just, I don't want to use the neoprene mat, I mean it's really good quality, very clear area where you, uh, you, you're you playing in. but. I like having that 3D element to it, with the turnbuckles and stuff. Uh, it's one of the reasons I pretty much only play it on the uh, the MDF ring that I painted with uh, the Tippy Club logo in the centre. But I've got a, like another project uh, in mind for doing like uh, some playthroughs and stuff like that, and kind of building a narrative campaign through it. And uh, for that, I really want to have some like awesome ring areas to play and I don't just want to be using the neoprene mats, I want to put a bit of effort into it and make it look cool. Um, so the first thing I did was I took some blue foam that I've had for quite a while and I traced out the area of the, the ring onto it so there'll be the actual play area and there's a little bit of I guess bleed where you'll have the uh, like your yeah, model standard on the sides or, or whatever you want and uh, so that's on there. There's a bit of rough edging from where I've cut because I don't have a wire cutter, I had to use a knife and it's quite thick for just using a, a model knife for this but I'm not too bothered with that because I'll be texturing it. I uh, also pretty much just did the same thing with some phone core. Uh, I'll be taking the paper top off of it and I'll be marking in the like the squares for where your, your models will sit on there and that'll just glue down onto the, the blue foam which will give us this top bit which I'll do as like a tarmac and then texture on the bottom to look like soil and stuff like that. Uh, so like I say the, the rough edges isn't really bothering us for that. Uh, so far this is as far as I've got for the main ring. Uh, ideas I've got for stuff, I'm going to have like some pipe coming out of there. Uh, I've got some spare bits of pipe lying around that I can use for that. Uh, I also got some of these MDF coffins. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them, I uh, forget how many exactly. There's two different sizes, uh, pretty good for human and halfling as well. So. I've done a bunch of them up and I'm going to have like one maybe two just sticking out of the uh, the sides a little bit just as, as if the this ring's just been like, cut out of the ground and raised up and there's, there's a coffin sat underneath there. Another thing I'm wanting to do on there is uh, just kind of give it that kind of thrown together in the, the car park look is I also got some of these crates, uh, still need to put them together, I've just sprayed them while they're still on sprue so it's a little bit easier, I'll end up painting them on sprue as well but, uh, so you've got the MDF crates that you put together and then you've got this grey board that you, you put on top for the, the little bit of detailing on there and uh, I'll be using there's some 2x1 uh, crate stacks which I'll be using as the, the turnbuckle itself and then there's like some spare ones that I'll have for using on the, the bigger base models to be able to stand on safely as well. And behind them I'm going to put some uh, the flickering gas light uh, pieces on there and have uh, the barbed wire wrapped around that then wrapped around the crate and just go around do the ring, uh, the ring ropes for that. Uh, the lights will be um, I'll end up dr uh, drilling through the foam there and having like, the light uh, wire work and stuff like that underneath so it's just out of the way and uh, I can see it in my mind, I, I think it's going to look really cool and I'm really looking forward uh, to making it. Now it's been a while since I've uh, been able to work on this really but uh, today I've done a little bit more with it uh, between waiting on different paints and stuff to arrive and uh, components for this and stuff. Um, 
I'm finally at a point where I can explain a bit more what I've done. So, on the top of the phone call, I uh, marked out where I wanted everything to be. Now, this hasn't been cut uh, particularly straight. Um, so, what I ended up doing was just measuring to find the, the centre mark and then measuring out from there for where I was placing everything. So, it's a uh, 10 inch by 10 inch grid uh, or 10 inch by 10 inch square even uh, from here so from the like the centre point 5 inch mark on there and then measured it out even either way and uh, each square is an inch uh, is an inch squared and I just have uh, marked off the, the points where they're intersecting on there uh, what I'd also done was I took off the top layer of paper from the, the foam core and uh, just that way it gives me a different texture of what will be like the actual play surface here. Uh, I've also marked in where the, the crates are going to go for the turnbuckles and there's also some holes there on each corner uh, where the uh, wires for the, uh, the lights are going to go through. I've uh, marked in some just, uh, little damaged bits of the, the concrete as well, just give it a little bit more interest. So that's it so far on this bit. On the underside, now the uh, originally I was going to have the, the wires coming underneath going into there, just for the sake of uh, like wires and stuff that are like, lying around on it. I've ended up putting circles in the uh, a little bit more closer towards the edges. Uh, the, the cables from, or the wires from the, the lights will go through these little channels into the, the holes here. On the underside, where they'll come through into the center point where the, uh, the battery pack will be in here. And then along this channel to where the button will be there. I've got a just a quick diagram of the uh, the circuit I'll be using here. Um, it's nothing particularly special. Lights will be directly attached to one wire from the battery pack, and then from that they'll be attached to the switch, and then the other wire from the battery pack will be directly connected to the switch as well, and that just creates a, a working on/off switch for that. It's a pretty simple one. All this uh, electrical that I've been working on this year, it's all been self-taught so this is a, a pretty simple one that uh, I actually learned in middle school and that was a hell of a long time ago. Okay so on the uh, the outside here then I've got the hole for the switch which I've put through there and uh, there's going to be a hole for a pipe uh, it's just a a little bit of uh, decoration on the edge, a hole for the coffin, and uh, another pipe there, which is directly parallel to the uh, well, not quite parallel, it's um, opposite side to the, the other pipe, and then go back to the switch there. To bring in the, uh, the top piece back. I'm going to start off by just painting this whole thing black, just get a solid undercoat on. And I'm not using a particularly like, expensive painter thing, it was about a pound for this acrylic uh, black paint from Wilco's. Don't want to be using like my Citadel paints for this, because that would just be ridiculously expensive. <coughs> okay, so eventually got that in there. Just going to use a big brush again. It was just a cheap one that I got from Wilco's. Just going to thin it down a little bit. And then I'm just going to be painting over this to get a just a solid undercoat on. And then I'll be going uh, with another. Yeah, layer as well. Again, just get a solid one. I don't want to see any of the uh, the white or the paper or the foam on this. So 
I'll be back uh, once that's been done. Okay, so I've painted the the foam core black. I'm going to leave this to dry for now. So I'm setting that across to the side there. Uh, I've also mixed up some brown paint using uh, red and green. Uh, Wilkos didn't have any brown paint in, so I had to make my own. Which not too bad. I can get some different tones going as I as I work on this, which I quite like the idea of. So all I'm doing is painting the the sides. Then I'm also painting the top a little bit, just uh, uh, just any like chips or anything like that that come away from it. I can you know just tie it back in quite easy. So I'm just painting the the top. Uh, sorry, they're the sides of the uh, the foam base, and any <coughs> and any of these uh, bits where I've cut in for like the pipes or for the coffin, I'm just going to make sure I get the the brush stuck in there as well and uh, get them painted. So again, I'm just going to continue painting this, and I'll be back once this is done. And by that point, hopefully the black paint should be dried as well. Okay, so it's pretty much dried uh, now, the, uh, the black paint. So what I'm doing now is just uh, mix up a little bit of grey paint. And I'm just going to put another coating over. Being careful not to sink it into the the markers for uh, for where the squares are, because I want to keep them black. Uh, if a bit of paint does end up obscuring the the markers, then I'll just go go over and uh, do a pin wash on it. So it's not major, but it just it'll save a step later on. So I'm just gonna. Go over. I don't need to be overly neat uh, as I go on. I'm going to gradually lighten it up and kind of hit key areas and just add like a kind of a little bit of like texture via the colour that I'm using. <coughs> So this is quite dark and definitely be going a few shades brighter as I, as I work on this. And the grey is not particular shade of, uh, of grey. It's just took a white uh, white acrylic and just added it to some uh, some black paint, mixed it up and that was it there. So just mix a little bit more in. Let's get a good mixture going. And again with the uh, with this shade, I'm just going over it. I'm uh, not letting the shade below it really dry. Uh, it's just going to help blend the the shades in. It'll just give you a nice kind of natural progression with that. <coughs> So I'm just going to continue to build this up and uh, I'll be back once uh, once that's done. So I've done a few more layers gradually uh, lightening the grey. Um, 
around the outside I've left it a bit lighter uh, I still went over the inside of it uh, it was more just like tapping the paint on and lightly brushing it down because uh, working with the paint where it's still a bit wet underneath uh, just if you just brush it over it just blends it in a weird way so just tapping it on and then gradually brushing it down it just gives it a bit of a, a nicer transition um, it went heavier on the outside like I said just so it was a little bit brighter and for now this uh, this top section is complete so I'm just going to let it completely dry and then uh, once that's done I'm going to uh, detail it put some like uh, parking spaces on and things like that just uh, a little bit of detail uh, to really bring it out a little bit more and we'll see how the uh, the little dividers look and once that's been done as well for the uh, the ground piece of it though uh, the browns finished up quite nicely uh, what I'd done towards the end of it was uh, I mixed in a little bit of brown, uh, a little bit of black into the brown paint as well and just kind of dabbed it along the bottom and brushed it up and kind of swirled it around a little bit everything blah 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 uh, just to give it a, a little bit more like color texture on there and also painted along the top and the bottoms of it as well just to, just to really make sure all the paints kind of covered right around it and uh, so you don't see any of the, the blue foam underneath uh, I also made sure I got the brush into uh, into there as well I ended up having to use a smaller brush as well just to kind of clag a bit more of it in and make sure like any point that you would be able to see has been covered uh, the pipes going in there though will cover up the majority of it which is uh, pretty handy uh, I've put some glue on the bottom and the back of the uh, the coffin so I've got that in there at the minute that's just uh, waiting the set it's a pretty good fit for for it sitting in there so I'm pretty confident just that little bit of glue will uh, it'll hold it quite well if not then I'll probably end up using hot glue but I, I don't think I'll need to bother uh, yeah again on the inside of uh, this pipe one I've just got the, the brush into that and a little bit around here I mean pre-measured the, the the button if I can just find it pre-measured that when I was marking out where to cut so it's like I know that you can't actually see anything that's in there and uh, the button fits pretty flush with the, uh, the end there so uh, I didn't really need to paint that one okay so just looking at what I can actually do at the moment because I want to get this as far on tonight as I can uh, and then hopefully complete it tomorrow but uh, so far what I'll definitely be able to sort out is these crates for the turnbuckles these are just uh, TD combat ones, uh, you saw them on the sprue earlier and I'm just gonna dab a little bit of wood glue PVA on there and I've got these marked out previously when I've been putting the uh, when I was putting the the markings on so I know where to where to put these <coughs> and you can just make them out on the uh, on the foam core uh, with the the paint on so it's fairly easy to, to actually line these up just uh, keep the way the shadow on that one
just a little bit of glue and clark them on. Okay, and I've got all four of the turnbuckles on there. Last couple there might have been off uh, off screen maybe. But uh, they're on there, just let them uh, let them set. And I've also painted the uh, the pipes as well. So there uh, these are the uh, I think conflicts. Uh, little building, uh, like, uh, building pieces for uh, like sci-fi terrain and things. So I've just uh, got a couple of these, put them together, undercoated them black, hit them with some Balthazar gold, just to give it that kind of like dwarven bronze look. And uh, once they're dry, I'll be sticking them into the uh, the holes on the on the sides, and. That will be them finished anyway, but just leaving that to dry a little bit. Um, okay, so uh, it's the following day from the the last section there where I've glued the uh, the turnbuckle boxes down. Um, after the paint's dried, looking at it, I just think it's a little bit dark. Uh, so I'm going to just lighten it up a little bit by dry brushing it. I'm using some Administratum Grey. It's a Citadel layer paint. Um, I know I said in an earlier bit that like I wasn't using my model paints on this, but for the the case of dry brushing it, I mean, no, I mean that's not like I'm painting the entire thing on there. So I. Uh, just I got this makeup brush also from Welco's. Um, pretty cheap, uh, soft bristle, so it's good for dry brushing. And I'm just gonna go over the the section where the models will actually be. So the uh, the outside of it will stay darker, and I'm just gonna steadily build this up before work this morning. Um, there is still in the depths of it. There are still some of the uh, like the white foam showing. So where the the, the black paint on the uh, the bigger brush didn't really get into. So I'll be adding just a little bit of wash into each one just to darken them up a little bit. I mean I could probably get away with not even having to do it, but I know they're there, so it uh, it will annoy me. So um, I'm going to do that uh, off uh, off camera. It's just using a, a small brush just to just dab a little bit of black wash into each of the things that need darkening up a little bit. So I'm going to do that. Uh, once I've done that, uh, I mean all the, the dry brushing should be dry. It should be dry now actually because it goes on very thin. It dries pretty much straight away. And uh, yeah, I'll be right back and we'll move on to the next section. <coughs> Okay, so I've um, done a pin wash on uh, on the little markers for where the squares are. I also went in just to deepen the uh, the cracks on the on the surface as well. Uh, for that, I just I used my own black wash. Uh, let's see if I can get a an actual shot of it. So Salem black wash. Uh, made a load of my own washes and gave them daft names <laughs> so who knows maybe if I make a website one day it's a decent wash um, it dries quite well uh, it doesn't leave weird show like tide marks and stuff and uh, has a nice coverage I've got a sepia that I made and uh, it's like one of my favorite washes to use it just comes out so nice So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some detail in onto the uh, onto the tarmac to make it look like a car park. So I've got the 
the Rumble Slam car from the uh, the Back Alley Brawl expansion. So as you can see, it takes up a two by four space. So for the cars, I'm just gonna edge it in so it'll be like halfway between uh, either side on there. So just watered down some of the the cheap paint that uh yeah, that I've used on previous steps. Now, if you wanted to make these like really straight and machine done, then you could uh, just use a bit of uh, masking tape and just put it either side, leave a little space in the middle, and then just run it over with a with a brush. But I kind of want to have a bit uneven. I mean, it's it's a fantasy game. Never mind that there's cars and motorbikes and stuff. But uh, yeah, so with it being like quite fantasy themed as well, uh, I'm just having it where it's been done by hand, so it's not exactly the straightest lines getting done. So I'll probably end up just doing a couple of runs of this. Uh, so once it dries, just hit it again just to really make sure it's uh, it's in. And just make sure I don't get any paint into the crack. Put it to about there. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. I'm just going to put this aside there. And... Okay. So I've painted on the uh, some of like the private parking sections there. I've done three. So um, I've got uh, reserve for gun. As gun has the uh, the motorbike, and then we have Ronnie Salvage's parking space because he has the car. And then I've done a one for Edmund Barraford, who in my in my law for a, for Rumble Slam, he is the like the owner of uh, Rumble Slam of uh, Tippy Club, and uh, yeah, so I have a model actually that I got from Hero Forge because uh, Edmund Barraford was my D and D character, and uh, just I like putting him in everything. I like to refer to him as a planeswalker, but he doesn't realise it. Cause he's just uh, he ends up being in everything so um in my world for rumble slam he is the uh, the owner of the tippy club so uh, he's got his own parking spot uh, right outside now I just want to grubby this up a little bit more so I'm going to use some blood for the blood god And just where could be a decent blood spot? It, it's a quite stiff bristle uh, brush, just a cheap brush that I've had for a while. So just getting it on there just leaves it quite a rough uh, blood splat. I quite like the look of there. Um, get one just right the middle. And I think one more. I don't want to overdo it with the blood. So one more. And just this corner here. Okay, so I've uh, went ahead and I've done three of the, the lampposts so far. So what I've been doing is just getting a bit of electrical tape, keeping it to the side. And threading the, the wires through and the holes that I've made. Just bringing it through a little bit. I'm just using some uh, some glue to stick it on. I, I don't know if the PVA will hold it all that well, but if it doesn't, then I'll just go back with super glue because my thinking is 
this is going to be putting a little protective layer over the foam if it doesn't stick the plastic down so hopefully I won't need to worry about super glue melting the foam but I mean we'll see if it comes to that so that's just getting it on there pulling the cable through then just pinning it down with my thumb or my finger and just holding that tight and just putting the tape on so that's going to hold that there hold the light down tight while the glue goes to work ok so I'm going to leave that for now to, to set and I'll just I'll double check it once I, I'm sure the glue's dried just to double check that it's uh, I think the plastic's holding well with that because like I say I don't know if this will actually hold it all that well I mean feeling that it may just hold the uh, the wires in the hole which I mean I suppose will just do the trick anyway so we'll just see how how that goes then I'm thinking next step will be just getting the wires to go through the uh, the holes ready to join up with the battery pack in there so like I say, I'm just going to leave this to set and then I'll be back after that. Okay, so uh, I don't think that the glue really holds the plastic uh, from the lights very well. So I'll probably end up adding a little bit of super glue just to, to really tack them down. Um, trying to do the like feeding the wires through on camera would have been a bit of a pain so I've ended up just doing that off camera um, I soldered some wires, used red and black black for the, uh, what well, well, I'll be connecting to the negative and red for the positive um, fed that, uh, fed them wires through there the, the holes that I'd uh, put through and then I've put some PVA on the, the blue foam and I'm just trying to stick the uh, this like, top of the concrete bit onto the uh, the blue foam which is the, the ground so I'm just kind of trying to weigh it down a little bit using some heavier uh, objects so hopefully that'll, uh, that'll sort it soon um, after this is sorted then it'll just be working on everything that's on the bottom including the, the button and uh, I'll be able to just flip this over with a, a box underneath just because I want to keep weight off of the uh, the lights and uh, we'll be able to just wire it all up and then we're in the final stretch it'll just be putting the, the ropes on which I'll do at the end so yeah, I just wanted to uh, just catch up with what I'd done uh, while I, I had the camera off. Because like I say, it would just been a bit of a, a slaver on to kind of show you how it is. Because a lot of it would have been covered by, uh, by this top piece anyway. Okay, this isn't exactly the neatest wiring, but it works. So <laughs> that's good enough for me. So the, the um, coming from the switch we have this uh, red wire here which links into the uh, the battery pack. And I've got a black wire which is uh, all of the, the black wires from uh, the lights connecting into one and then connecting to the other uh, the other prong from the, the switch. Then we have this black wire coming from the battery pack which is then connecting 
to these red wires and hitting the switch there just checking the four corners here I can see that they all lit up so I'm going to I'm just going to tape these together using electrical tape and got some here And then I'll just wrap it around like that. And that's good enough for me right now. Okay, so I'll just hook this light off so we can get a look. So I've got a switch around here, and as you can see, the other lights have lit up. So it's a full circuit. Um, okay, now I'm just going to try and tidy up the bottom of this a little bit so uh, this can sit flat and it'll look a bit better when it's on the table that way. So I'm just give it this, uh, five minutes, I'll just cut away a bit of foam and I'll get that sorted. So when it comes to doing the ropes around the ring, uh, I use the same wire that I used on the MDF ring. Uh, it just looks like barbed wire and uh, wrapping it around the uh, the crates, it just looks like when they've set up the ring, they've just like hastily uh, like, tied it around, which uh, I think gives it a pretty good look for, uh, for the theme of the ring. Uh, when it gets to the end of it, I use the wire cutter section of my wire strippers and I just uh, use a little, little dab of super glue later to kind of hold it in place. And with that the ring is completed and it's ready to play on as well. I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video and also hit the like button down below as well. Thank you.